you very much, uh, Chair, uh, Cabinet Secretaries, Chair of uh, Council of Governors, Deputies, all protocols observed. Uh, basically, I'd like to present to you a few slides on uh, what we've been doing to harmonize the different ideas on what urbanization is, what its impact is, and what are the outcomes or should be the outcomes. I'm not sure whether I see uh, We have um, use the concept of structural transformation, which is what the African Union, uh, ECA, and others have been employing to explain the best way for us to explain what urbanization uh, can do if it's sustainable. So my take would be to start from the platform of emphasizing sustainable urbanization. The first slide shows us uh, basically where we were 50 years ago Kenya, for instance, had 9.2 million people 50 years ago. Uh, today we have about 46 million people. Uh, out of this, 50% of the urban population are under the poverty line. 31% 30, of people in Kenya have access to improved sanitation. Only 27% have access to safe water. Uh, the rate of urbanization is quite high, about 5%. Uh, and much of our policies on urbanization and in the way they connect to the key issues of industrialization uh, is very weak. So these are some of the challenges that confront us. We have tried to uh, intervene in the discussion uh, of what rural is, what urban is, uh, like I said earlier, by using the notion of structural transformation. Many people seem hostile to the, uh, the, the notion of urbanization because of the uh, tremendous challenges that it poses in the urban area. Congestion, lack of infrastructure, uh, lack of water, lack of sanitation, and so forth. And therefore, we still uh, have a fixation on the rural areas. But what we know is that urbanization is an inevitable uh, phenomenon. And therefore, we need to find ways to deal with the rural urban connection. So uh, what, what we, what we uh, have focused on is to try to explain to policy, making, uh, to policy makers uh, on how best to unite uh, who lives in the rural area and who lives in urban. What takes place there and what takes place in the urban areas and what, or what is supposed to uh, take place in the urban areas. Structural transformation is the reallocation of economic activity away from the least productive sectors, say agriculture for instance, into the productive areas uh, of uh, industry and industrialization. Uh, whenever you see a country that has made a tremendous advancement, uh, usually they, have, they are the industrialized countries. Uh, they have two things going for them. There is usually the rise of modern economic sectors and then the movement of resources, say for instance, uh, labor, and capital from, say, agriculture to industry. We've had a lot of discussion today on agriculture. What we want to see in Africa is to see more processing, as the uh, uh, speakers have said, to see more value addition to what we produce rather than just sell raw materials. Uh, we've had this discussion for decades. I think it's time for us to, to begin to see action. Uh, what are the key elements of structural transformation? There are four interrelated things that happen. Whenever you see an advancement from agriculture to industry to services, uh, first you see a declining share of agriculture in GDP and employment. The second thing you see is the rural urban migration and you see increase in uh, natural birth in cities because the health system is improving. The third is the rise of modern industrial sectors, uh, particularly industry and services. And then you have a demographic transition from high risk of birth and death to low risk of birth and death. So uh, these are points to look for. Uh, we have a model that allows us, right from national level to county level, to begin to show that you can actually measure how well we are doing. Uh, because we are unable to show this, I cannot show this on the table. Uh, 
Uh, but there are three key things I want to emphasize also because of time. What does sustainable urbanization do uh, in the way that is conventionally known? In other words, structural transformation is a system whereby you move progressively from agriculture and processing of agricultural goods into industry, particularly manufacturing, into services. Uh, when you have a, 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 a what you call conventional uh, transformation that has gone re well, or sustainable uh, transformation and sustainable urbanization, uh, you begin to see productivity growth uh, in the cities. Uh, these are the driving forces of modern agriculture. You also see from, we move from labor intensive uh, activities to skill intensive urban uh, agriculture, uh, uh, agriculture and industry. But what we have seen in much of Africa, and we've done this analysis for almost all African countries, is that people move from agriculture and villages to towns to cities without the opportunities that should be availed them in, in the urban areas. In other words, there are no factories, there are no opportunities for processing. And what is the result? One of the key results I will discuss here this morning, on particularly the youth, the impact on youth, is what we call structural unemployment. When you have a situation where people move from villages to towns to cities without the requisite opportunities to work in cities, uh, they either are underemployed, they do things that they were not trained for. You have computer scientists, you have mechanical engineers, you have agricultural scientists trained with so much um, funds, uh, not having the opportunity for processing. So they either go to the services sector or they go into other things. So this is uh, one of the fallouts of lack of a sustainable urbanization that we are witnessing in Africa. The second thing that sustainable urbanization should do is that it should promote industrialization. Now, what we see here in Africa is that rather than having uh, a continuously improving industri industrial sector, uh, many countries have a, a, a highly uh, populated services se sector. But the kind of services sector we have are low productivity. They are very similar in their profile to agriculture, uh, where people sell SIM cards and do all kinds of uh, small things uh, that you cannot, uh, that doesn't provide you with the quality employment. We need to uh, address this problem. Uh, I wish I can show you some graphs of some African countries where you, normally in the process of industrial uh, urbanization that transits to sustainable urbanization, agriculture remains, uh, keep going down, and then industry goes up. But what we see in many of African countries is that services have taken over. Uh, and by services, I mean not just tourism, which is good. We have financial sector, we have uh, hotels, and so forth. But much of them do not provide the kind of employment that uh, young people uh, have. They are very few in number, and the quality of uh, jobs are very low. The third thing that I'm going to stop here, uh, because I'm, I'm not able really to uh, show this, is a sustainable urbanization that is actually uh, impacted by strong manufacturing should reduce poverty and actually foster employment. Uh, it leads to higher productivity when urbanization is sustainable. Uh, it creates opportunities for earnings. It improves level of social development. Uh, however, 70% of total population in large metropolis in Africa, they live in slums. And what we find is a very strong correlation between informal slum kind of uh, economies and poverty. Uh, so, so therefore, we have also very negative correlation between informal employment and GDP per capita. In other words, slum formation and informal economy is what we call growth reducing. Um, we are all aware of our own Kiberas and several in Africa, uh, such uh, phenomena in Africa. It is time for us to begin to change the situation. Uh, as uh, many speakers have said this morning, one of the SDG goals is about 2030 we should reduce poverty to zero. To do that, we need to address sustainable urbanization. To address sustainable urbanization, we need to have industrialization. Africa cannot continue to import the most basic things. We cannot continue to import what we eat, 
the roof upon which our houses uh, uh, we live in. We import even water. I think it's time for us, in order for us to have sustainable urbanization, to equally have sustainable industrialization. Thank you very much, Chairman. I'm sorry I'm not able to show the... the... Thank you. I now hand to the moderator to do the rest. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. And thank you, Professor Banji. I think uh, Professor Banji has set a very good foundation for us to have this uh, discourse now on sustainable urbanism. And just the way the, the, the objective of the session did mention, there are two things or contexts that we're going to be looking at. And one is, of course, uh, from an examination point of view, how inclusive, safe, and resilient can we start to determine our urban centers to be? But the other element of it is, of course, to what extent are these urban areas potentially becoming our engines of growth, particularly in the counties? And we've had a lot of discussions now uh, from the county levels that as counties are setting up their administrative headquarters, very gradually, these administrative headquarters are taking the shape and form of the capital urban areas of these particular counties. And of course, that comes with a certain ambition. And I want to recollect what uh, Professor Banji has told us on sustainable urbanism. Three things that perhaps will help us in focus. One is that it fosters productive growth, or productivity growth for that matter. And I think that's one thing we need to flag even as we go through the conversation with the panelists. The second is the fact that it actually promotes industrialization. And that's another area that I think we'll be addressing as we are uh, compounding our issues around this. And the third is the fact that it reduces poverty while at the same time fostering employment. And I think this is a good moment for us to pause and ask uh, our director planning, uh, who is representing a minister for land, uh, housing, and urban development, to give us some preliminary perspectives to what extent are we engaging with sustainable urbanism, perhaps from the point of view of policy, from the point of view of this natural productivity engagements, and from the point of view, of course, of the entire poverty schemes which have been given here in terms of statistics. So if uh, you would mind, uh, uh, Augustine, to just uh, share with us some quick thoughts, uh, two to three minutes, and then we can proceed on with this particular conversation. Augustine, please. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, moderator. Um, first, I, I want to take this opportunity to uh, pass to you uh, greetings of goodwill uh, from uh, Professor Jacob Kaimeni, the Cabinet Secretary for Land, Housing, and Urban Development, who would have wished to be here, but because of other uh, engagements uh, in Uganda, he was not able to come, and he requested me to stand in for him. The second point I want to make is that uh, urban planning is a fully developed function, uh, and it's a function of the current governments. And as a Ministry of Land, Housing, and Urban Development, we are keen to play our role in terms of policy development, legislative development, and the development of standards and strategies that should guide uh, the whole process of sustainable planning uh, to engender the ideals which the previous speaker has shared with us. In this direction, uh, we have uh, worked with stakeholders, including county governments, uh, to develop or uh, formulate uh, legislative frameworks uh, to guide uh, urban uh, development planning, which includes um, the fiscal planning bill 2015, which has gone through the National Assembly and is now before the Senate. 
We are also uh, in the process, we are following uh, the finalization of the land amendments bill, which contains three uh, critical provisions that will make a contribution to sustainable urban uh, planning. And that includes the provisions on the minimum and the maximum land holdings, acreages, uh, the provisions on evictions and resettlements, as well as the provisions on historical land injustices. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we are also formulating policy on national urban development as well as national land use policy. We expect that when these instruments are finalized and put into implementation, we will have the right framework to guide us in addressing the challenges associated with uh, sustainable urban planning. We have just come from a session that was talking about ideals of agriculture. But we also need to keep in mind that the urban sector is increasingly becoming quite important in providing opportunities for investment, employment creation, wealth creation, and as a matter of fact, we do expect, according to the statistics, that by the year 2050, 50% 50 of our national population will be residing within the urban areas. And for that reason, we need to have very pragmatic and deliberate efforts made uh, at both levels of government to promote sustainable uh, urban planning. And this includes the fact that we need to develop and implement count and local area development policies as well as legislation to effectively cascade national policy, policies and legislations. We have talked about this in the previous discussions, but it's very important that we engender the ideals that are captured, the objectives that are captured in national policies and legislations. It is very important that county governments proceed to develop their own local area, count legislations and policies uh, to address their specific needs. We need to establish strong and competent institutional frameworks. In our observations, counties have done very well uh, in this area, but there's still a, ro a lot of room for improvement in terms of having competent institutional structures that can deal with the aspect of uh, sustainable uh, urban planning. The other important area is provision of adequate financial and human resources to support urban planning. It is a fact, but a moderator, that many of our counties are borrowing leave from the previous central government, which paid scant respect and attention to matters of urban development planning. And for that reason, the amount of resources being committed to matters of urban planning and development are very minimal. Uh, if you look at the budgets, there's very little that's being committed uh, to urban planning. And, and that's why it's becoming a bit worrisome that we may not be able to attain the ideals of sustainable urban planning as expected. Well, Masinde, maybe I can take you on that particular point. Uh, you made a very interesting point about insufficient uh, budgetary allocations to urban planning, and per se, we're talking about urbanization, sustainable urbanization in, in quantity, so that. And I want to turn to uh, 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 Governor Malombe, who's the chair of the APEX body, which is the committee at the Council of Governors that really looks at, at these perspectives. And I'm sure they've been analyzing to see uh, why is it that we have trends that are not giving urbanization its prominent space. And, and uh, Governor Malombe, if you could kindly share with us, um, uh, what's, why, why is this skewedness in, in, in allocation, yet we are here creating an enjoyment facility that these are the engines of, of county growth, uh, whereby one should have then thought that we need to invest uh, proportionately uh, to create these engines of growth. So from an apex uh, body perspective, you could share with us some thoughts. How is the, the committee then uh, trying to address these issues 
and other issues that will be pertinent to us at this moment. Governor. Uh, is it audible? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator. Uh, first of all, before I directly answer the question you have just asked, I want to put some things in perspective. And uh, some of them have been mentioned by Professor and also Mr. Masinde. The first thing is for all of us to realize urbanization is unstoppable. It will happen, and uh, the challenge is not to stop it. The challenge is how to ensure urban areas are properly managed, are properly planned, and are pro properly provided for. Indeed, if you look at our constitution, urbanization was one of those sectors which were prioritized. Why am I saying this? If you look at Schedule 5 of the constitution, which prioritized the acts of parliament which should be enacted within the first year, you find the Urban Areas and Cities Act was supposed to be enacted during year one, that is 2011, while other laws relating to other sectors were supposed to come year two, year three, up to year five, and we have just finished five years since we enacted our constitution. Uh, really, we needed to ask ourselves, what have we done to affirm this prioritization of the Constitution and the people of Kenya of urban areas. And why was this done? First of all, it was done because it is, was realized these are the places where industrialization will take place. Kenya Vision 2030 provides that Kenya is supposed to be an industrializing country, growing at 10% per annum, for 10 years so that we attained the status which the Eastern Asian Tigers attained. And that industrialization is supposed to take place in urban areas. And for urban areas to be able to be attractive for investments and industry, they must have certain basic infrastructural services. And those are roads which are properly planned and which are aligned to modern ways of living. If you look at our roads, they don't even provide for border borders. If you look at uh, the quantum of border borders as a means of transport in urban areas, they account for almost 90%. But if you look at the amount of money which is put to put border border ways and where most of the people are transported, it's very minimal. And if you also look at other things which you are supposed to do, we are supposed to prepare urban development plans, county spatial plans, county integrated development plans, and uh, within those, we provide for how we are going to have uh, sewerage systems, uh, dumping sites, uh, waste management, uh, things like uh, security and street lighting, uh, et cetera, et cetera, housing, and so forth and so on. And all that requires money, financial resources. And uh, it's not entirely true to say county governments have not been allocating reasonable resources for urban development. Because in a typical uh, town, you find uh, county governments have allocated money for street lights. When we were coming to Meru, we saw all those street lights. When we were in Empu, we saw the street lights. That, I'm sure, is not usually sometimes taken into account. You look at uh, how clean, in relative terms, our towns are. That is part of money is allocated to urban areas. If you look at uh, stormwater drains, that is happening. But we have an area where we still need to do a little bit more. And that is, first of all, putting in the relevant infrastructure institutional structures to manage urban areas. Uh, you cannot, as envisaged in the Urban Areas and Cities Act, you cannot expect to manage urban areas using the ministries and departments which are the county level. And that's the reason why the Act itself provides for committees uh, where you have towns, 
for boards where you have municipalities and cities. Those have not been set up, and part of the reason is because the act itself is being revised, and the way those people are to be brought on board is still being clarified, and you have heard the act is at the Senate level, and we are still waiting for that to go through so that you can put those structures in place. But once we put those structures in place, we need to make sure they get sufficient and adequate financial resources. How do you do that? One of them is to do what we have done in Kitui, uh, although it's not necessarily prescriptive, uh, different counties can have different approaches. We have uh, provided votes for the two town administrators so that as we do our budget, we look at their needs and we give them AIEs as a counting officer so that they don't have to go to the chief officer responsible for urban areas. But they are still uh, supposed to report to the chief officer and the CEC responsible